Welcome geometry students to class today on this Wednesday the 26th. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you're ready to learn some math today. Let's quickly go over some announcements. There will be a quiz on Friday, so make sure you're ready for that quiz on Friday. Azu, it seems to me that you travel with the basketball team. I could be wrong. So if that's the case, um, if you'll email me, I will send to you the videos uh, that you're going to miss. You can watch those. You can make up this quiz next week sometime. Um, but a quiz uh, this Friday for everybody. We'll go over on Thursday more in depth as to what will be on the quiz. Uh, you owe me yesterday's homework. You did, it was given to you in class yesterday, Tuesday. Uh, here's the assignment right here, page 488, these numbers right here. This is from yesterday, um, Tuesday's homework, and it is due today. So would you please turn it in now at this time? I would really appreciate it. Please turn it in now. Test retakes by Friday. If any of you want to do a test retake, the, the highest you can get is a 70. And then number two, if you do want to take a retake, I must know at least one day in advance, and you must email me with the day and the period that you're going to take it, because I have to know what teacher to give the test to, okay? So if you're interested in that, I must know one day in advance. If you're going to take the test, like, tomorrow, um, then I've got to know before Wednesday's over. I've got to know early enough to get the test to the teacher, you know, Thursday. All right. And then, uh, Jason, uh, your test needs to be made up. You know that. Don't feel stressed. I'm not rushing you. I know you missed weeks. I'm just going to remind you every day, be working on that and make that up when you're ready to. Now, here's something unusual for you, Jason. I did not email your parents because you're usually so good at getting your homework in. And for those that think I'm being inconsistent, you're wrong. She's made up a bunch of work. In fact, yesterday, Jason, you turned in your last to make up assignments so really good job excellent job uh, you owe me nothing now but I did not get Monday's homework from you so that's unusual for you so please check I don't have Monday's assignment in front of me I know it was less than 9.1 and so you can ask your friends for that um, I'm trying to see if I have it written down here close by yes I do um, that assignment um, was Page 477, 17 through 38 all. If you turned it in, I did not get that. And then Jake, I did not get Monday's homework. You know that I did email your parents, and you're supposed to be turning that in today. So um, everybody owes me Tuesday's homework. Jason, Jake, you owe me Mondays. Never hesitate to call or email if you have any questions at all. And let's go ahead and get started with the notes today. Remember, this whole chapter is about surface area and volume. Now, right now, we are focusing on surface area. Later on in this chapter, we'll start getting into some volume, okay? So right now, we will be looking at finding the surface area of a lot of solids. Right now, we're focusing on surface area. So far, we have learned how to find the surface area of prisms, like the one below. Remember, you list out uh, top, bottom, front, back, left, right. You find the area of every side and then you add them up. All right. Sounds like my boys will be a little rambunctious so um, I'll have to pause the video here occasionally and see what's going on but that's fine. Okay moving on. We have also learned how to find the surface area of cylinders like the one below. Okay, I'm back, guys. Sorry about that. Okay, um, I forget where I was. We have learned how to find the surface area of cylinders, like the one below. And here's the formula right here. And so we know we've done all of that. And today we're going to be learning how to find the surface area of two objects, pyramids and cones. Now, I know today's a Wednesday, and today's video is pretty long, so there will not be any homework tonight, but there will be homework tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll go over what's going to be on your quiz on Friday, and you'll have homework only, okay? There are, these are just, by the way, um, learning how to find the surface area of pyramids and cones, they're just formula problems. So they are not difficult as long as you understand which number should be substituted in for which variable. So all that you have to do is <coughs> relate the correct formula to the correct solid and then put the right numbers in and you should be okay. All right. So here we go. The heading today is surface area of pyramids and cones. And the date today is the 26th. The date today is the 26th. I would encourage you to write that down. 
and let me say this again, the surface area of pyramids and cones, the lesson number is 9.3, and today's the 26th, the 26th. Now, it is very important that you understand some terminology, so I would encourage you in your books to turn to page 491 and also 493, and I should have typed that in here, um, so I'll write that right here for the cone, page 493. Now, please listen to me carefully and the formulas for pyramids and cones they're going to refer to height and they're going to refer to slant height okay height and slant height same thing here height of a cone and slant height now <clears throat> you need to know the difference between these so it takes make some really good notes in your notebook as to where you can find this or if you're a good artist and you want to draw this in your notes that's fine if you were standing on top of a pyramid right here, okay, and you could drill a hole in the top of the pyramid and drop a rope straight down with a weight on the end, so the rope went straight down and went landed right in the middle of the pyramid like this, that would be the height of the pyramid because it goes right down the middle of the pyramid, touches the ground here on the inside, and that is the height. Notice this, it makes a 90 degree angle with the base. The slant height would be like this. Let's pretend you're standing on top of a pyramid right here, okay? And you have a rope, and you roll the rope down the side of the pyramid to your friend who is standing right here on the ground. And they're going to grab this rope, and they're going to climb up the side of the pyramid the length of that rope that goes down the side of the period uh, uh, pyramid excuse me is called your slant height your slant height and doesn't that make sense this height right here is not slanted it's straight up and down and this height here is slanted so we call this measurement here the slant height that makes total sense to me same thing with the cone if you could stand on top of a cone shaped object and drill a hole and drop a rope straight down through until it touched the ground right here that would be the height the slant height is the distance of a rope going down the side of the cone you need to know the difference between those two do you understand that you need to know the difference or you're going to be lost with the formulas Now, here are the two formulas that we use to find the surface area of a pyramid and the surface area of a cone. In just a second, I will explain what, actually this L right here really should be a cursive L. That's what the book uses. And this L right here should be a cursive L, to be honest with you. Now, I'm just going to use a lowercase L on my computer here, but nonetheless, in a second, I will explain what B stands for, what P stands for, what L stands for, etc. And you need to write that down, okay? So go ahead and write these formulas down, and then go ahead and write this down. In these formulas, capital B stands for the area of the base. So you're going to have to find the area of the base. P stands for the, capital P stands for the perimeter of the base. So sometimes you're going to have to find the perimeter of the base. And the letter L stands for the slant height. <clears throat> the slant height, okay? So you need to know this as we get into these problems. Now these problems take a little bit of time. This video probably will take the whole class period. If you don't finish it today, even though it's a church night, I would encourage you to go home and, and take the last five or 10 minutes and finish the video, although I'm not gonna make it a requirement. But if you don't finish it today, you will have to finish it tomorrow. And I think most of you will finish in class today. <coughs> Sorry about that, let me get a drink. But it is very important that you understand this material. Okay, I would like you to make note in your notes. We're going to work on an example on page 492, number 2. Page 492, example number 2. If you look in your books, it says to find the surface area. Find the surface area of this pyramid. Okay, well, we have our formula right up here. So I'm going to go ahead and write it. It's B plus 1 half P times L. OK, 
Okay, here it is right here. Surface area of a pyramid, and we obviously have a pyramid. Now, let's list out what we have and what we don't have. First of all, we have to find the area of the base. We do not have the area of the base yet. We'll have to find that. P stands for the perimeter of the base. We do not know the perimeter of the base. We'll have to find that. We do know L. L is the slant height. Actually, we don't. I apologize. I thought there was a number right here. There's not. So we do not know the slant height. So we're going to have to find all of these things. So first of all, let's start off with B. B is what? Look right here, please, students. B is area of the base. So if I'm going to find the area of the base, I look at the base. The base is a square. I can see that. A 6 by 6 square. That's what the pyramid is setting on. How do I find the area of a square? Side times side. 6 times 6 is 36. So just like that, I found the area of the base. Now, perimeter of the base. Perimeter means I add up all four sides of the base. So the perimeter of the base is 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, or 6 times 4. So the perimeter of the base would obviously be 24. If I'm going too fast, back up the video and listen to this again, okay? So the area of the base is 36. The perimeter of the base is 24. And now we're talking about the slant height. The slant height. <clears throat> now, the slant height would be The slant height would be letter L. Now, here's how we're going to find it. Please watch this carefully. I can help you students if you'll trust me and listen to me. Notice there's a height coming down here that's 4. Does everybody see that? Now, if you want to draw in your book, that's fine, but do it extremely light in pencil and erase it when you're done. Now, notice I go straight over like this and I connect that line and I have a right triangle. It's an imaginary right triangle right there inside the pyramid. Do you see that? Look at that. Mr. Earhart, why does that right triangle matter? Are you kidding? Guys, this is the leg right here. This is a leg of a right triangle. How high is that height? Four. This is a leg of a right triangle right here. How far over is it? Well, you tell me. Isn't this whole length right here six? Would you guys agree to that? Well, if this height lands right in the middle of the pyramid, which it does, then that means from here to here is half of 6. So if this length here is 6, then from here to here, we have a length of 3. So look what you have, guys. You have a right triangle that has a leg of 4, a leg of 3, and now you're going to try to find the slant height, which will be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So here we go. We have leg squared. We should know Pythagorean's theorem by now. Plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared or slant height squared. <coughs> so 4 times 4 is 16. 3 times 3 is 9. 16 plus 9 would be 25. So 25 equals L squared. Now we take the square root of both sides. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of L squared is L. And just like that, you now have your slant height. Your slant height is this distance right here. It's the hypotenuse of your right triangle. So where this pyramid, or excuse me, where this L is right here, I'm going to put a parenthesis and put a 5. And now that you have found all of that, this becomes really easy. You bring down your 36 plus, now you multiply 1 half times 24 times 5, and you'll get 60, and then add those two together, and you will get 96 square feet. And that's the surface area of the pyramid. It's not that bad as long as you A, list out the formula, B, see what you know and what you don't know, and then find the information that you don't know, and then substitute those numbers in and solve. It's really not that difficult, okay? All right, let's try two more of these, and then we'll go on to the surface area of cones, okay? Surface area of cones. Okay, in your notes, if you want to make note of this, write down page 493, number 1 at the top. Page 493, number 1 at the top. Now, we're going to find the surface area of the pyramid. So here's our formula right here. Now, we need to look um, and see which one of these 
um, which which um, what information we have and what information we don't have. So um, here we go. First of all, capital B means area of base. I do not have the area of the base. P stands for the perimeter of the base. I do not have the perimeter of the base. Um, L stands for the slant height, and I do have the slant height. They gave it to me, so it'll be a little easier this time, okay? So here we go. Surface area of a pyramid equals, first of all, it equals B. B stands for the area of the base. Notice my base is a square, a 7 by 7 square. So 7 times 7 is 49. The area of the square is going to be 49. That's my base. Plus 1 half. And then it says capital P. That stands for the perimeter of the base. Well, the perimeter of the base would be 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7, or 7 times 4. And that would be 28. Now, your slant height is 9. So where the L is right here, I'm going to substitute 9. And now we're ready to solve this. 49 plus, and then I would have 1 half times 28 times 9 which would give you 126. And then you add 149 plus, or excuse me, you add 49 plus 126, and you will get 175 square inches. 175 square inches. Okay? So sometimes they're a little easier when they give you the slant height. Sometimes they don't. Okay, and you have to learn to find the information that you don't have, and then when you have all of your information, you make your substitution. So again, today we are learning how to find the surface area of pyramids and cones. Right now we're working on pyramids, okay? All right, let's continue on um, to the next problem. On this problem here, I would encourage you to write in your notes, page 493, example number two at the top. Page 493, example, num example number two at the top of the page. Now, again, we're finding the surface area of a pyramid, okay? So this was going to be even easier than the last one, I believe. Because if you'll look here in this problem, they actually give you the area of the base, okay? So here we go. First of all, do I know the area of the base? Yes, I do. Capital B equals 35.1, so they give that to you. Do I know the perimeter? No, I do not. I'll have to find that. Do I know the slant height? Yes, I do. Notice they give it to me right here. The slant height is 12. Okay? So I'm really, I'm really ready to make some substitutions. For B, area of base, I'm going to put 35.1. And then I'm going to put plus 1 half and then P, perimeter, I'm going to put 27. Now let me explain why I'm putting 27 for the perimeter. Notice this side here is a length of 9. Notice I have one mark here, one red mark here, and one red mark here. That means all three of those sides are congruent. So if all three of those sides are congruent, then that means I have a 9, and a 9, and a 9 for all three sides of my base. And remember, P stands for the perimeter of my base. So 9 plus 9 plus 9, or 9 times 3 is 27. Now for L, I'm going to substitute the slant height, which is right here, 12. And now we're ready to solve this. I'm going to bring down my 35.1 plus, I'm then going to multiply 1 half times 27 times 12, and if you do that correctly, you will get 162. And now if you add these two together, 35.1 plus 162, you will get 197.1 centimeters squared. Okay, so not too difficult, although you'll find, the, you'll find the homework challenging tomorrow when you come into class and start working on these, okay? But this is how you find the surface area of a pyramid, okay? The surface area of a pyramid right here. Now, you don't need to memorize that for your test or quiz, but you, need to, you do need to be able to, to associate that formula with 
the fact that this formula goes to finding the surface area of a pyramid. All right, let's continue on. Okay, now we're going to continue on and we're going to start looking now at finding surface areas of cones. Now I really thought I had pulled that formula over and I guess I did not, which is okay. But I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick while I'm talking. Um, so I'll do that here just for a second. Um, but let me go ahead and do that. Uh, Let's see if we can get this here. This might not work. Okay, I, I apologize too for not having this ready. It's my fault. Uh, B plus pi R L. Okay, there we go. Good enough. And I apologize for that little. Um, unpreparedness. Okay, so this is the formula. Um, let me copy this. There we go. This is the formula to find the um, surface area of a cone. All right, so we're going to attack this the same way that we did the others. Okay, we're going to start off and see what we're missing. Now, <clears throat> first of all, capital B stands for the area of the base. Now, understand something here. There's no way a point, look at this, there's no way a point can be the base. So sometimes, just like with the pyramid, they might have the pyramid turned upside down. With the cone also, if the cone's turned upside down, just go like this and flip it like this. And now you can see a little better what we're looking at here, okay? Now you see the base is a circle. Do you see that? So we've got to find the area of the base, all right? That's what B stands for. Well, we know what pi is. We know what the radius is right here. Here's the radius. Do you all see it? Here's the radius from the center of the circle out to the edge. And we also need to know the slant height. And look, they gave that to us. I know it's upside down, but we know that's 6 inches. And we know this. the radius here is 4 inches. So we've got some work to do, okay? I'm going to go ahead and substitute what I do know. I do know pi is 3.14. I'll put a check mark there. I know the radius is 4, so I'll put a 4 and put a check mark there. And I know the slant height is 6, so I'm going to put a 6 and put a check mark there. The only thing I have left to do is find the surface area of the base. Well, what is the base? Look at the base is a circle. How do you find the area of a circle? Do you remember? Pi r squared. We learned how to find the area of a circle. Pi r squared. And your base right here is a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and find the area of the base. I'm going to put 3.14 times my radius squared. Now, Obviously, my radius squared is 16, 4 times 4, and then 16 times 3.14 would be 50.24. So now I've also found the area of the base, which is 50.24. So for B right here, I'm going to put 50.24 and then bring down my plus sign. So now I would have 50.24. Plus, and now multiply these three numbers together. 3.114 times 4 times 6. And that would give you 75.36 if you type it in correctly. Now add these two numbers together. And if you do that correctly, you will come up with 125.6. 125.6. Now, in the directions for this problem in the book, let me get a drink here real quick. In the directions, they said to round to the nearest whole number. So if you're going to follow the instructions perfectly, then this 6 right here tells you to either leave the 5 alone or round it up. Well, we know the 6 means to round it up. So if you're going to round to the nearest whole number, it would be 126 square inches. 126 square inches. And by the way, all of these answers have been square units because we're dealing with surface what? Surface area. 
<coughs> and area is always in square units. Okay, all right, let's continue on. Let's take a look at two more of these, and then we'll be finished for the class period. Okay, make note in your notes, please, that we're going to look at page 494, example 3B. 494, example 3B. Now, there's the formula. And so what we have to find would be the area of the base. We do not have that. Pi, and I do have pi. So I'm going to go ahead and put 3.14, and I'm going to check that off. I do have the radius. The radius is right here, 12. So I'm going to check that off. But I don't have the slant height. So I've got to find two things, students. Are you with me? I have to find B, which is the area of the base, and I have to find the slant height, which is L right here. So let's do the easier one first. The area of the base, the base is a circle, so an area of a circle is pi r squared. So in order to find the area of the base, that's 3.14 times the radius squared, 12 squared. So 3.14 times 144, because 12 times 12 is 144, would give you 452.16. Okay, so I'm going to move that up here for my B, which is the area of my base. So there we go. Now I have the area of my base. I'm going to check that off. All right. Now, let me erase this. And now we're going to work on finding the slant height. Now, in order to find the slant height, it's going to be the old right triangle thing again like we talked about. Notice I have, they've given us the regular height, which is height, which is 5. They've given us the radius, which is 12. So if I could draw an imaginary right triangle like this, I know it looks a little curved right there, but it's really not. So look what I have. I'm going to go ahead and cut this thing out. I've got a right triangle that comes down over and then back up like this. So there's my right triangle. I'm going to pull that out. There's my right triangle. And notice my right angle would go here. Notice this leg has a length of 5. This leg has a length of 12. So the L right here is really your hypotenuse. So remember Pythagorean's theorem. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared or L squared. So now I would have 5 times 5 is 25. 12 times 12 is 144, so I really have 25 plus 144, which is 169 equals L squared. Now, take the square root of both sides. Take the square root of 169 and also the square root of L squared. The square root of L squared is L. The square root of 169 is 13. So we did it. We found the slant height. It goes right here. It's 13. Now I can check this off. <coughs> now I'm ready to solve this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down my, and that's not going to work. I'm going to bring down my area of my base, which is 452.16 plus, and now I'm going to multiply these three numbers together. So 3.14 times 12 times 13, which would give you 489.84. And now if we simply add these two, no two numbers together, the answer will be, and you can see it there in your book also, 942 exactly. 942, we're dealing with feet, so 942 square feet. All right. So you've done pretty well. Okay. It's not been the easiest video. Um, one more problem and then we're finished. Okay. One more. Here we go. Page 494, number six at the bottom. Page 494, number six at the bottom. Now here we go. We know that our formula for finding the surface area of a pyramid is that formula right here and we do not know the area of the base plus we do know what pi is so I'm going to go ahead and put 3.14 check it off I do know the radius the radius is 3 check it off the only two things I have to find are the area of the base 
and the slant height. This is identical to the last problem, which of course is fine because repetition is really important. So here we go. Let's do the easy part first. Let's go ahead and find the area of the base. Now if you'll look, the base is obviously a circle. There's the base. So when I tell you to find the area of the base, I'm really telling you to find the area of a circle. And in order to find the area of a circle, it's pi r squared. So for pi, I'm going to substitute 3.14. And for my radius, I'll substitute 3. So 3 squared is 9. I really have 3.14 times 9, which is going to give you 28.26. 28.26 okay so let's bring that up here and put it right there and then go like that all right so there's the area of the base or the area of the circle I can check that off now all right now let's go ahead and find the slant height now notice in my in my cone here I have a height going down four I have the radius going across three and now to find the slant height, I basically have a right triangle again, like I did before, okay? So I'm going to trace over my right triangle. And we're going to cut it out and put it right down here. And now let's see what we can do. Here's my right angle. I have a leg here of 4, a leg here of 3, and a slant height of L. So using Pythagorean's theorem, I'm now going to find the slant height So if I'm going to find the, the uh, length of the hypotenuse or the slant height, I have leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Well 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25 so 25 equals L squared. Now we're going to take the square root of one side and we're going to take the square root of the other side and we're left with 5 equals L. Okay? So there's the slant height and it is going to be 5. So now I can substitute 5 right here and check this off. So now I can bring down 28.26 plus 3.14 times 3 times 5 and that would give me 47.1 and then if you add these two numbers together you will get the correct answer that is 75.36 now I think they wanted you to round to the nearest whole number so if they wanted you to round to the nearest whole number you would look at this number here, 3, and that would tell you to leave the 5 alone. So if you rounded to the nearest whole number, you would write 75 centimeters squared. I hope this video has been helpful. If you will learn these two formulas, make the proper substitutions, and use your calculator correctly, there's really no reason why you cannot get these problems correct, okay? So, um, what we have covered today, again, is how to find the surface area of pyramids and cones. So now we've learned how to find the surface area of four solids, prisms, cylinders, pyramids, and cones. Okay? All right. I'll give your homework to you tomorrow because we're going to work on it during the class period. <clears throat> tomorrow. Um, so have a good rest of the day. And if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to email me or call me.